I'm just chuckling over the actions of some of our colleagues in Geneva, talking about being boxed out. What are they going to have to do? You know, get some basketball lessons. You know, uh, uh, you know, learn how to box out opponents like you're supposed to box out. Uh, 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 you know, people from the from the rim get those rebounds, and then a physical altercation. What they're going to bring the octagon in there? Uh, <laughs> I just I just find that a little humorous. Let me tell you, back in the day, I used to cover for another radio station in Detroit. I used to cover Coleman Young press conferences. Mm-hmm. When there were a lot more reporters, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> elbows flew. <laughs> there were there was a lot of aggressive action trying to get in that scrum, get your mic close enough to the mayor. Well, those you know, those days have one of those telescope scooping wands, you know. <laughs> yeah, we, we didn't have too much fancy stuff back then. Uh, with that tone, we go to a far more sedate setting. We are very pleased to be joined by the uh, Clerk and Register of Deeds for Ottawa County, Justin Roebuck. He joins us via the Zoom connection. Justin, no, we don't need to do some boxing out or have the octagon pulled out to go (laughs) vote, but still. That's right. No one's getting boxed out over here uh, in in any of my press events, Gary. I don't know how sedate it is, but a little more sedate than that, I guess. Yeah, just going (laughs) to have to hit the gym and uh, you know be, be ready for be ready for a little rumbling you know bad boys reporting anyway uh <laughs> if you got a question about elections voting uh dealing with the re- uh, the clerk and register of deeds offices which you can do a little bit more easily now uh Justin will be happy to talk with you at 616-395-1450, 616-395-1450. Okay, it is 935 on Wednesday morning, June 16, Justin Roebuck. What's the latest on what is open, what people can do, and <laughs> still need to be able to set appointments or stuff with the uh, Clerk and Register of Deeds office here in Ottawa County? Yeah, that's a great question. And the great news is we are actually open for business at all of our locations. Uh, The normal hours uh, that that we had pre-COVID, which is eight to five uh, at our Fillmore office location, um, as well as in Grand Haven for circuit court records. And then we have satellite offices. We have satellite office for vital records in Grand Haven as well on the first floor of the county courthouse. We have a satellite office in Holland, which is actually our busiest location for customer service uh, over there on James Street, across the street from Brand Steakhouse. So if you want to get some lunch and do business over there. Uh, and then we also have an office open on Tuesdays in Hudsonville. And that's also pretty busy for the Georgetown area uh, as well. It'd be great to expand the, those hours where, uh, you know, staff coverage is always an issue in terms of the resources that we have to be over there multiple days. But we're definitely there to serve Georgetown area on Tuesdays. So. Um, you guys have the help wanted sign out yet? <laughs> because it seems like uh, a lot of entities are looking for workers and maybe, well, maybe, maybe, maybe the help wanted signs up Ottawa County. I don't know. So true. Yeah. I mean, I think we're fortunate in Ottawa County. We've got a great, uh, you know, we've got a great team uh, on my staff and we, we have great support from our County board and administration in terms of our, um, you know, the resources that we do have. So uh, at this time, um, I'm not hiring, <laughs> but the county's always hiring. Yeah, I just That's a great place to work. Know, I'm just kind of wondering, you know, you, you've got staffing issues, and you know, yeah. we've seen businesses not, you know, sorry, we can't open. We don't have enough staff to work this day, you know. And just, so, I'm just kind of, just kind yeah. of asking. You never know. You never know. Uh, besides the, uh, the 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 hours for the clerk's office and the register of deeds office. Um, it, it also involves uh, the uh, dealings with the uh, 20th Circuit Court, which is the Ottawa County Circuit Court, um, yeah. with its, uh, for the most part, it's up in uh, Grand Haven, but uh, uh, yeah. that also involves the district court as well. Right. Yeah. So our, you know, our responsibility more specifically is the 20th Circuit Court and the clerk of the Circuit Court. and We handle all of the, uh, the jury process for our court. It's been really a challenging year in 2020 for the circuit court in terms of how, not just here, but, you know, across Michigan, uh, in terms of how to hold trials, particularly jury trials, where, um, you know, we had a number of 
requirements kind of set by the state Supreme Court in terms of how we could proceed with certain in-person services, uh, jury trials among those. Uh, and now we are at the point uh, where the data show that you know it, our, our COVID uh, numbers are low enough uh, that we are now able to hold jury trials, which is definitely good news um, for everybody. Um, but we're pretty busy in, in that department. So there's about, about 300 uh, criminal cases currently uh, on the docket of our judges uh, in the circuit court. Obviously not all of those result in, in jury trials, but there are a number of jury trials we're gonna be holding through uh, the next several months to just kind of make sure that we're, uh, we're clean, clearing, clearing out any backlog that existed over the past year. Now, let me step a little bit to one aspect of the jury situation. That is if someone gets notification from your office for jury duty. What does that entail? What, you know, what, what should people look for or do once you get that summons in the mail? And apparently about 300 juror questionnaires are coming out of your office every two weeks right now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So kind of ramping up those numbers, our typical numbers are, you know, we have a two week kind of time frame for the sessions, I guess you can call them in terms of the, so they, they're kind of rotating on a two week basis, but normally we're sending out maybe a hundred questionnaires in the, in the two week time frame. So obviously in an effort to make sure that we have a consistent, large enough jury pool to handle additional trials, we're sending about 300 questionnaires out every two weeks. So if you're an Ottawa County resident, you're eligible to serve on a jury, maybe getting one of these questionnaires. Basically, eligi eligibility is determined by age and, and residency and citizenship. So 18 years of age or older uh, and you know, reside in the county and a US citizen. Um, so the questionnaire part is a simple form. You can fill that questionnaire out online. There's a little QR code right on the questionnaire. Um, basically just ask some, some initial questions for um, the process to make sure that you know, you are indeed eligible to serve if you were chosen to serve. And then if you receive a summons after that questionnaire, and our summons uh, number is a little bit lower, it's about 40 to 50 people a week get summons uh, notifications. Uh, that's a process where basically uh, you're required to call in um, at, at certain times uh, to a certain number uh, in our office where we're, we're sort of indicating whether or not there is a jury trial happening and whether or not you actually have to report report for duty, so to speak, at the Grand Haven Courthouse. So it's kind of a multi-layered process. Um, you know, if if folks have a an excusal that they're wanting or maybe a deferral, maybe it's just a bad time <laughs> for you to serve, um, there are ways of doing that as well. We kind of have to follow pretty strict statutory guidelines for excusing jurors. Uh, there's only a certain number of, of things that will actually get you an excusal, um, but a deferral is a little bit easier. That's up to our chief judge, uh, Judge uh, John Van Allsburg. He's a great guy and very, uh, um, uh, very um, on the ball when it comes to anything related to uh, legal matters, really, but he's, he's, he goes through every one of those um, deferral processes and, and make sure that we can defer folks for uh, certain things and events happening in their lives. So that's a little bit about the jury process. Very important role, um, you know, that, that people can give back to their community by serving, for sure. Now, speaking about the process and say, for example, somebody has received a jury summons. Uh, they you know, got the questionnaire, came back, and yes, you are in the pool. And I'm, I'll, I'll use just a hypothetical situation, okay? Today being June the, 5th, uh, June the 16th, okay? So somebody gets a summons, and you are active for, a, I'd say, two-week period, right? Is it more? Right, more anything? for the so term. Yep. For the, ter the two-week term, so uh, the 21st. All right, from the 21st through, and I'm going to look at my, uh, 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 um, through July 2, it's Monday through Friday, uh, very, you know, if you're on a trial, sometimes you may have to work Saturdays, but uh, Sunday's not. Right. But anyway, um, you're, you know, in from June 21 through July 2nd, and you're, you're in the pool, and you need to call every day. Say, yes. for example, one calls on the 21st, no, no problem. You call the 22nd, 
you have been summoned. Is it a 24-hour situation, a 48-hour situation? Because you're going to have to make arrangements, uh, be it with work, be it with child care, to try to yes. address that situation. Yeah, absolutely. So it's normally a 24 period. So in other words, you, you would be summoned for the next day, for the following day. Um, so we have different time frames, and I'm not exactly sure what those time frames are uh, for folks to call in by a certain hour. And it's an automated message. Um, unless you need to speak with someone, obviously, you can definitely do that. But you don't have to feel like you have to, you know, go through a um, conversing with someone every every day when you call. It's basically an automated message. So it gives folks that window of time to essentially um, make those arrangements. You know, initially with the summons, it's sort of like a heads up, hey, this may happen sometime during this two week period, but then you've got a 24 hour time frame where you can uh, make it happen. And again, you know, we're, we're able to work with folks too who have extenuating circumstances. And, and um, the, I think the important thing too is just communication. Uh, making sure that if there is something that comes up that you're just communicating that with our our office and that we can relay that to the court. Okay. I'm, again, uh, from time to time, we need to sort of bring up the jury duty situation because, yeah. you know, more and more people perhaps will be getting that call. Perhaps one thing uh, for those who might be, you know, you're going to be in a period from say, again, we'll use the example, June 21 through July 2nd, you might need to tell your employer, listen, I may have to be called for jury duty on 24 hours notice. You know, I'm giving you a heads up or you may have to tell your, you know, your, your child care situation, you know, or tell grandma, Hey, you may have to take care of the kids uh, on a certain day that, you know, you, you got to do some advanced planning. You can't assume that you're not going to get called the two weeks window. Right. How often can one expect to be called in a two week window? Can we, can, can you sort of give a guess on that? Well, that's a great question. And it honestly all depends on the actual schedule of the trial itself, right? So we've had a number of terms where, um, where there's not a trial happening. Uh, and in those cases, then, you know, they're, they're, it, we, we would notify folks of when, when the trial uh, were, was scheduled, essentially. So say maybe during the second week of your, of your two-week term, a trial got scheduled on that second week. So then there would be some notification of that. Um, but yeah, that, that's, it's a good question. So, uh, you know, it, it, it honestly depends a lot. And sometimes things fluctuate too. One of the challenges that we have is quite often, and, you know, I think this is a positive thing for the community, but quite often folks will settle or, uh, you know, will plea uh, prior to a jury trial. And that essentially negates the need for the jury trial. So it's kind of an up and down thing. Um, and it's a challenge, and we definitely are grateful for people and their flexibility with responding to that. I have one more follow-up, but I'm going to hold off for a moment. I do have a caller. Good morning. You're on the line with Ottawa County Clerk Justin Roebuck. Hey, Justin. Good morning. I uh, apologize if this is a repeat question, but I just tuned in. What I'm curious about is over the years, I know of, of several people who've been called multiple times to jury duty that live in the same area that I do, and yet I and many others have never been called. Can you uh, comment on that, please? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for the call. You can listen off air toward the response. Justin? It's a great question, and I feel your pain. I've always wanted to serve on a jury. I'm not sure that I would get selected um, because of my particular role with the court, but I think it, uh, it, it is fascinating to see. So what, what actually happens is we, we receive data on a yearly basis from the, the Secretary of State's office. And what's interesting is on jury duty, Basically, the, the data from SOS that we're getting is the uh, driver license file. We've heard a rumor, pretty persistent rumor over the years that, you know, if you register to vote, then you are essentially putting yourself in that pool for jury duty. And that's not the case. Um, so the, the data we get from SOS is mainly based on the driver license file. So if you have a driver's license or a state ID in Michigan, you're over the age of 18, you're in that group. So we get that data. And then that data is randomized. Um, and, and we have a program specifically to do this. And this has actually been something um, that's pretty significant, pretty important uh, in, in court management across the country, basically making sure that the selection is random across multiple different you know, demographics of the county, right? So we, we need to make sure that we're pulling people in a true random fashion. <laughs> 
from across the, uh, the entire perspective of the county. So we don't wanna be just highlighting, you know, say a certain demographic within the city of Holland. We keep pulling people from there or, or certain more rural demographics that we're keep pulling from. So the, the program that we use has actually been approved by the you know, National Center for State Courts as this process of random, randomly selecting. So in truth, I can, I can tell you, because we spent a lot of time with this over the past couple of years, choosing a system that does this, it, it really is random. Um, and, and it's randomly pulled again in, the, in those groupings of 300 folks every two weeks. Um, and, it, and it's you know, selecting at random based on the, the term and also based on how it's selected in previous terms. So it's kind of a complex system and it's really interesting if you're a nerd like me. Um, but yeah, I, I feel your pain. I have also not received uh, a questionnaire or a summons either. Um, so maybe one of these days. Yeah, we'll see. You know, we'll wait and see what happens. Two more things along the lines of jury duty questions and then we'll take our break. First of all, if um, somebody is notified you need to report to the courthouse on this date and you are seated for a possible jury you know you get yeah. questions from the attorneys uh, involved and uh for cause or whatever cause you're not taken you're still on the hook for the remaining time even though you might be saying no might have been told no for a particular jury Exactly. Yeah. So it's interesting. And, we, and uh, jurors are obviously paid for their, their service. There's a per diem and mileage that you receive uh, as a part of the process. So you would be paid for the time that you spent, you know, during the selection process, the Vaudeer process, basically. Um, and if you were not selected, you do remain in that pool for the rest of that term. So say, for example, there's another trial that happens during that term. There's a possibility that you would get pulled um, you know, for that second trial. So, you know, in, in typical, you know, our, our historically, we haven't had many more uh, trials during a, a two week term or time frame. Uh, as we're clearing out a little bit of backlog, that may be a little bit more likely uh, than in other times, but that's basically what happens. Two other things, and, and I was gonna say two other things, but a third one just came up. Um, my background in Detroit, we had with the recorder's court, one day, one trial jury duty. You serve a day or you serve yes. a trial. And if you get, uh, you know, that day goes by, you're done, you're done. So, yeah, that's why I was bringing that aspect yes. up. Secondly, once you are in a pool for jury duty and that term ends, how long before you might have to see another questionnaire? Well, that's a great question. And what's interesting is I, I honestly don't know the answer to that. I, I, that's a good question. I, I, because um, the reason why I'm saying is because I was told, you know, back, you know, this was in the 80s when I got tapped. Sure. Yeah. Um, I was told you're good for the next year. You won't be getting any notification for the next year. But, you know, 12 months from now, you might get another one. So I, I, I don't know whether sense. or not that has changed. I want to try to find, I'm going to try to find an answer for that. Maybe I can do that over the break because that's an interesting uh, question. And I'm not sure how that works because I know some of the rules have changed. Some of the processes changed, you know, based on that ran randomization that I was talking about earlier. Um, I know we've had to change a lot of our process of making sure that we're you know, following a truly random selection process. Um, so, yeah, let me try to get an answer for that one. <laughs> One final thing, does your office handle uh, grand jury selections or is that done a different way? That is done a different way, basically through the, the federal process. So yeah, that, that's a good question too. And always a fascinating, you know, grand juries are really fascinating to me. We, we, we don't actually have our hands in that process, so. I just didn't know whether or not there was local grand juries or it's all federal. So that's, yeah. that's, that it's handled out of Grand Rapids. It's not handled yes. out of yep. uh, Grand Haven. Exactly. Justin, first of all, uh, before we get to the final point I wanted to bring up, did you have a chance to check on a couple of things that we were talking about jury duty before the break? I did, indeed. So the question you had basically, Gary, was, you know, if I served on a jury, um, when can I expect to potentially get a questionnaire or uh, another jury summons? Is there a break? 
in between there. So the answer is a year, like you said. So basically during that uh, year period after serving, we would not send either a questionnaire or a summons uh, to another uh, to person again. However, you could potentially get a questionnaire or a summons from another court. So like a federal court, for example, or even the district court, um, you could actually serve uh, potentially uh, multiple times in a year in, in a different capacity. I would say that's probably pretty rare, but that could happen. Now, the other point I want to bring up and um, something that you'll be taking care of at the noon hour on this uh, Wednesday, June 16th, you'll be joining a national panel discussion sponsored by the Bipartisan Policy Center on continuing threats to free and fair elections. Talk about what this panel uh, uh, the discussion will be all about and your, your participation in this. Yeah, so this is a group, basically, the Bipartisan Policy Center it does a lot of different things to focus on, you know, uh, national policy issues that affect all Americans, basically. And I think one of the real challenges that we have facing us as a country uh, moving forward is the, the challenges and the threats to our system of election administration. We've talked a lot about election security on the program. Uh, and a lot about, you know, what we can do to bolster election security and, you know, make the, the voting process safe and secure and accurate for our voters. But another element of that is making sure that election administrators have the resources that they need and the tools that they need. Uh, and we have a lot of um, pretty intense scrutiny uh, on, on this industry. And there's not a whole lot of um, not a whole lot of resources that have been allocated in the light of that additional pressure and the additional uh, scrutiny and, you know, the additional mandates that are coming down from state and federal government. So I think it's really important that we pay attention to the infrastructure of election administration itself. So I'm looking forward to that discussion. Um, I have a lot of colleagues and friends around the country who have been personally threatened uh, as well in, in the in the wake of you know, a lot of what happened in 2020. And that's just, it's a rough time uh, to be in this business. <laughs> I can certainly understand. And very briefly, uh, there'll be some town halls coming up about the election process in Ottawa County. Uh, yeah. uh, sort of ensure this election, you know, people know about the election process in the county. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the goals that we have is to make sure um, that people understand the process and have access to it. And so, uh, we're looking forward to announcing some dates in the near future where we're going to do some, you know, virtual as well as live uh, town hall events, opportunities for people to really get their hands uh, into the process and, and see what it looks like close up. And we're excited about that. He is Ottawa County Clerk and Register of Deeds, Justin Roebuck. As always, we appreciate your time and your, your thoughts and sharing some things. And today we talked a lot about jury duty and why not? More people might be called right. to jury duty in the next uh, few weeks or so. Justin, thank you. Have a good holiday, and we look forward to chatting with you again next month. You as well. Thanks so much, Gary. Thank you very much, Justin Roebuck on 99.7 and 1450 WHTC.